1037 News and Weather next at 4.30 on CKCB. I'm Paul Richards. Here's the Hughes Corporation. Rock the boat on 1400 Radio. So I'd like to know where you got the notion. News next to 10, followed by John Nichols with Call for Help. I'm Ken Charles, back at 11.05 with much more music. Here's Paul Simon, Dakota Chrome, on 1400 CKCB Collingwood. When I think back on all the crap I learned in high school. John Nichols joined CKCB in 1972. Back in those days there, it was basically... I hate to say this, but uh, in the old days, it was almost wing it, if you know what I mean. Uh, you, you came in, you, you, you took a look at the wire service, uh, the old teletype uh, that give you the news, and you pick off some of the, the neat things that were happening in the entertainment world, you keep that there. You had your, your box of 45s beside you, you had your rack of uh, LPs at the back of the control room there, or in the big rack at the side of the... At the, on the side of the control room, and uh, you went for it, free for all. Qu- quite often, uh, you were playing a lot of your favorite songs. Ken Charles hosted the midday time slot and says that in the 70s, it was all about the music. The way that we put it all together, the consistency, the way that we had the opportunity to choose our own music and play it. If you recall, we developed this wall of sound. There was never any dead air. We never talked outside of uh, live rates for commercials and newscasts, without music in the background, even the flip side of the hustle. We talked right to the post of the record. We talked to the extra. It made the radio station sound big, really, really big. This wall of sound, a lot bigger than we could ever imagine from this little tiny 1,000-watt radio station. Paul Richards worked at CKCB while still attending high school in Collingwood. I remember my first day, I was operating the CKCB Fish Derby, and my job was to be inside, where it was nice and warm, in the studio, playing records, playing commercials, and making sure that the microphones that were outside for the people at the Fish Derby to be using were turned on and off at the appropriate times. I realized right away as a high school student how lucky I was to have landed this part-time job at CKCB at the age of 15. I was uh, in grade 11 at Collingwood Collegiate Institute and at 3 o'clock every day I would rush down to the radio station and get ready to do the 4 to 6 drive home show on CKCB 1400. And the first thing I would do was arrive at the station and then go through all the 45s, a lot of the songs that I wanted to play, and get them all ready and get them all piled up ready to go on this side and then you get the commercials all piled up and ready to go on that side and the program log that someone had typed for you was in front of you, which gave you direction as to how you would make it through the next two hours. This one again? Oh, all right. Yes, that is a safari jacket, and yes, it was polyester pants, but let me ask you a question. What were you wearing back in 1975? Oh, look what else I brought out for you. (laughs) If only his show were audio video. I, I guess we were... (laughs) <laughs> the whole entertainment of that time. I remember we went to a thousand watts. Uh, uh, uh. The way I am today, it looks like I'm operating with a hundred thousand watts. Oh, how about this one? I have one too. Wednesday, October 30th, 1974, Collingwood Times. Great newspaper. What if every pumpkin looked like Ken Charles? Probably why I hide in the basement every Halloween. John Nichols broke new ground as the voice of the Collingwood Junior B Blues, broadcasting play-by-play action at a time when the technology wasn't always reliable. Boy, uh, they're probably some of the most favorite uh, memories that I have when it comes to to broadcasting. Yeah, when you go into some ranks there, you never knew whether or not uh, Bell was going to have uh, the... um, the link in ready to, to, to hook up. Sometimes you had to jury rig uh, things like that. Other times you'd go into a rink where they didn't have a broadcast booth per, per se and you'd be broadcasting right from the side of the boards or out of the penalty box or wherever and you never knew. The pucks is hanging around your head. As a matter of fact, one night in Oro they put us on top of the canteen of all places when uh, in the corner and of course when they were shooting from that uh, that far point I, yeah, 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 the pucks were zinging around our heads, and I said to Scotty, do not, whatever you do, that's Scotty Carmichael, never take your eyes off the puck in this rink because you'll get her in the kisser for sure. Rosemary Henderson was the first female on-air announcer at CKCB Radio. In the beginning, um, we were we were broadcasting all the hockey games, and um, 
uh, Bennett, I think his name was, uh, used to broadcast from the uh, Collingwood Arena, and they had to have somebody at the uh, at the control panel at, in the Collingwood station, and then the feed was sent to CKBB. So I was the one that uh, would do that every Friday night, and then the playoffs, of course, there were more games. So that's really how it started. Well, I don't know what it looks like today, but in those days we had all the albums were on the wall behind us. So before we'd start the show, we would pull all our music out and have it all lined up on the floor. And, and everyone, when you played a song, you had to date it so that the next person on the air didn't play a song you had just played in the last 10 minutes. So we had to get all our music out. You tried to get all your commercials kind of out, your little cassettes, um, promos. Um, you do your own weather. You had to look that up. And, uh, and sometimes we did interviews too. So lining up interviews, um, having them sit right beside you in the control room. And hopefully there was enough room for everybody to sit there. So you're, you were busy all the time because you, um, even to put an album on, you had to, you know, you had to kind of line it up and get the, you had to get the needle just right so that when you hit the button, it started. So it was really, you know, you were busy all the time. <laughs> CKCB 1400, Solid Gold, from the good old days of broadcasting from downtown Collingwood. The good old days.